a step backwards, you know, with, with Boogie Cousin out. And that has not materialized as of yet. So uh, Anthony Davis has stepped up big time uh, in these few games without. And I, and I say few games because I don't want to make it seem like he's been doing this all season. You know, playing without Boogie Cousin is not. Uh, an easy task so I'm not gonna you know downplay it and, and, and say that it's easy but it's only been a few games that, that's all I'm saying but with Anthony Davis do you do you think he can keep this up and when I say keep this up I'm not talking about because I think over the past five games he's been averaging like 40 or 42 points not doing something like that because I don't think that's sustainable for anybody. You're going to you're going to flame out trying to do that. But he does have in the team, they're in sixth place which I really thought they would fall, you know, out of playoff contention at this point, but it, it still is a tight race in the Western Conference. They are only up by two and a half games over the Clippers who are in the eighth spot. So people are still gunning for them. So things could still happen, but you got to give Anthony Davis credit, at least at this point, for what he's done. Because the big thing about Anthony Davis was, you're just number one overall pick. Can you put a team on your back? Can you put a team on your back and you yourself? We're not talking about playoffs. That's, that's a totally different story. But during the regular season, can you put a team on your back and get your team three to five wins just by you doing it yourself? And he's doing that right now. So you got to give him credit. So here, here's he's averaging right now. This is over a six game win streak, too. You got to give him credit for that, that they um, won six in a row. He is averaging 41, almost 42 points a game, 15 rebounds, three steals and three blocks. And shooting 54% from the field and 39% from uh, three-point range. So, it, and this is the big thing. He's attempting 12 free throws a game. 12 free throws. Those free shots, you know. So, that is very hard for someone to continue. But I do like it because for six games, uh, it's he knows it's on him. He knows that this team can't fall apart because guess what? If the team fall apart, then everyone going to say, or everyone may look at it as like, well, really who's the, who's the valuable person here? Boogie or, or Anthony? Because Anthony's been by himself. Now Boogie's been by himself in Sacramento, but I, he didn't have the talent that he has now, you know, uh, with, with the Pelicans. When he was in Sacramento. So that's what I'm saying. He he's on Anthony Davis has been on a better team. Anthony Davis uh is capable of what he's what I just read off to you. He's capable of doing this. On a on a little bit smaller level. I mean like averaging 28, 32 points a game or something like that. Yeah, I could see him, you know, doing something like that. So this is this is good. For the team, this is good for Anthony Davis. Can he keep this up? I think probably for for a few more games, but he's going to need the help of his teammates uh, because I don't think he can sustain this for the rest of the regular season. And then you're wanting him to take that into the postseason where, again, he's going to be without Boogie Cousins. But I do like it because he's showing, like, I, I, I got it. I got this. Maybe it took me a second, but I got this and I can do this. Trust when I say this. So uh, it's going to be it's going to be hard, though. You know, uh, that like I said, right now, let me go back. There's six. Who's who's third? If they were going to the playoffs right now. And I'm going to tell you, they was. Well, you know what? They would see Minnesota right now. And, and Minnesota is without um, uh, uh, Jimmy Butler. At this point. So if the playoffs started right now, and I hate saying that, it's about 20, 22 games left in the season. But if the playoffs started right now, they would see Minnesota. I would give the Pelicans a chance. I'm not saying that they would win, but I would give them a better shot than probably a lot of people would without Jimmy Butler. I think I think Anthony 
Davis could definitely could pull off a first round victory. You know, if, if they see now, if they happen to fall to seven and please don't fall to seven because you got to see Golden State or Houston, it's going to be one of them. You know, yeah, they, they, they're just going to quadruple team up on Anthony and it's going to be over, you know, uh, for him. So he's better off in the sixth spot, in the fifth spot, and of course the fourth to get home court advantage for the first round. So four, five, six, that's where they want, that's where they want to stay, you know, uh, Shouts out to Shelly B, who is in the building as well. Appreciate you for dropping in. And Big L, who is in the chat room talking cash money. You know, you know what? I'm going to say this. Big L is the most overrated listener in this whole chat room. Yeah, yeah, I said it. Well, you know what? I didn't say it. Lopan told me to say it. Indeed. Yeah, so now they haven't been beefing for a while, but Lopan, you know, he had been telling me that, you know, Big L comments has been getting under his skin a little bit. Indeed. So. That's what Lopan had to say, but hey, we've been doing good. No beef in Lopan in here because Big L want to ask, where's Detroit? Because Detroit, the Pistons are my team. Uh, they are struggling, you know, right now. But hey, you had to take the chance to trade and Blake uh, for Blake, and there's still time. There's still time to get into the playoffs, and there's still time uh, to make moves because this move is not about this year. This is about you know, the future. So they still got some time. So Big L asking about where Detroit at, you know, and, and again, that was not, that was not my saying, saying Big L is, is the most overrated listener. That was low pan saying that I love Big L, but I, I like it when he comes in here because he brings noise and then he keeps me on my toes. And then, you know, him and low pan go back and forth at each other, but low pan stop it with the Big L being the most overrated listener, you know, in here. So, uh, let's move into another team that is possibly getting a player back. And the impact that they may have on their team. And that would be the San Antonio Spurs. Now, San Antonio, we talked about this. I think they're, you know, this would be the first season in probably 18 years. They're probably not going to be a 50-win team. Um, but at this point, I guess that's not, that's not really important. Uh, it's more of the seating where they're going to finish there and fourth right now. Uh, again, a tight race, a tight race uh, in the West. They're half a game behind Minnesota at this point. So they could get into that three spot. How much of a threat would the Spurs be if Kawhi plays, if he comes back? So it's rumored that he might be back. At the end of March, uh, of course, that's pretty much four weeks because tomorrow will be the first. And what what are you expecting from from Kawhi? And I don't think he would be much of a threat. I, I maybe on the defensive side, possibly, but I don't know on the offensive side because you got here's the thing. Here's here's how I look at it: is that Are the Spurs, and, and I don't see them doing this, are the Spurs going to come back and put Kawhi into the system and then everything revolves around Kawhi at this point? I don't think so. I don't think they're going to do anything like that. Like I just said, they're fourth in the Western Conference without Kawhi Leonard. He's only played, what, eight, nine games this season. So pretty much he hasn't been there all season. So I can't see them saying, you know what, we're just going to change everything that we're doing and, and rally around Kawhi. Now, can Kawhi just come in and contribute? Because remember, at this point, last year, well, not right at this, well, probably really at this point last year, LaMarcus Aldridge was probably in his head talking about he wanted to be traded. And we know how that worked out. Pop told him, sit your butt down. You ain't getting traded, you know. And what happened? He stays there. Now LaMarcus Aldridge is an all-star game. Played in an all-star game, you know? And and through what? 56 games? This dude is averaging almost 23 points. He's 22.8, uh, averaging eight rebounds. Uh, not doing too great from free, uh, three point, but that's not really his game, you know? But he's shooting 50% from the field. 
So it's just like, how is this thing going to mesh with Kawhi and, and, and LaMarcus? You know, is LaMarcus going to have to take a step back? Uh, is he going to have to, you know, defer to Kawhi? Uh, these are, uh, to me, these are valid questions. You know, uh, Big L said Kawhi will be hurt again. That's another thing that you got to consider. You know, will he reactivate, you know, his quad injury? You know, at, at this point, I I would probably say no, because I don't think the Spurs at this point. I mean, he's been out this long. He's been out this long. So obviously you're going to pretty much have him come back at 99 percent, 100 percent. They're fourth in the Western Conference without their quote unquote best player, which he is their best player. So if you maybe could even get him back for the playoffs, then it it gives you a chance. But I think they're going to be the same as as what they are now if Kawhi comes back. I don't think it's going to be a threat. It'll be a threat next year, but I don't think it's going to be a threat, you know, this year. You're asking this guy to get in the game shape. You're asking him to play an NBA schedule, albeit that, it, you know, it would be only a few games at that point, but you still got to play playoff basketball where there's a lot more physical and, and you're asking him to subject his body to that where you can't replicate that. You know, you there there's no, no practice, you know, that they could do to simulate that, you know. Uh, so I don't think he's going to be a threat. Not one bit. He will help, but I don't think he's going to be a threat. Now, watch he go out there and and, and prove me wrong. But you got to think it's going to take some time to get accustomed to the pace again. But then also, how is that going to work out with LaMarcus? I think those are valid questions, you know, but I don't think he would be that much of a threat. The, the The question was, how much of a threat are the Spurs if Kawhi plays? Uh, and I, I think they are pretty much where they are now, you know, fourth, maybe third in the Western Conference. And, and they finished, what, third last year? And they saw, what, Golden State in the second round? And got dismantled. Now, of course, that's Golden State. And they had lost Kawhi, you know, due to the Zaza injury uh, and his foot. But I don't know how much I uh, of a chance I gave them in that entire series. So he will help. The Spurs will be better. But I just don't think they'll be a threat. I think you still got to worry about Minnesota. I think you still got to worry about, of course, Golden State. And now you have to worry about Houston. This team has gotten better every year as far as at least in the standings. Seventh, two years ago, third last year, and they are currently in first. That's a pattern, ladies and gentlemen. That is a pattern. That, this, you know, they are getting better. Now, all this will definitely come down to James Harden, like we already talked about, but that's for another story. So what we're going to do right now, before we get back, because we want to talk about, you know, some other rules in the NFL and and, and some of these offseason moves that, that teams are doing right now. But you listen to the Wait a Minute Show with your man Jelani J.B. Bodie. We're going to take a break. Uh, and then when we come back from the break, we'll finish up with some NBA news. I mean, NFL news. And then we'll get back into some NBA news. And then we'll talk about college ball. Yeah, I, I've been waiting on this one. It is, I probably will be raising my voice, but we'll be back in just a moment. Hey, what's up, everybody? I am Vince Wright, the sports governor, and you know me from the Sports Done Right show. But when I'm not doing Sports Done Right, I'm in the executive mansion chilling with the Wait a Minute show. That's right, Jelani, Lopan, indeed. Keep it tuned here, y'all. The Wait a Minute show. 
My name is Vince Wright, and I approve this message.